Now, the Central Bank of Nigeria has fined four banks for breaching its forex transaction regulations on MTN's capital repatriation and asked for a refund of a total of $8.1 billion from the bank. Now, this comes after Nigeria recorded a 12.5% dip in second quarter capital importation and 1.50. Now, Yvonne Mango, Director, Sub-Saharan Africa, economist at Renaissance Capital, joins us now to discuss the state of Nigeria's business environment and the Q2 GDP reports. Thank you so much for joining us on the show, Yvonne. Thanks for having me. Now, Yvonne, just taking a look um, at this report, according to Nigeria's um, Statistician General, he did say he's really not seen any clear difference, you know, from the, uh, the numbers we're seeing this quarter and last quarter. I mean, to summarize, he just said it just shows that Nigeria's economy is still struggling out of a recession. What do you think of the numbers released so far? Okay, yeah. So firstly, the overall numbers were disappointing in that growth uh, slowed to 1.5% in the second quarter compared to 2% in the preceding quarter. And this is after seeing a successive improvement in the growth number since the second quarter of 2017. Now, if we take the numbers apart and look at the various sectors, um, the encouraging news is that the non-oil sector saw growth strengthen actually to around 2% from 0.4% a year earlier. So that's a uh, good news story. Uh, however, the reason why we saw a decline in the overall GDP number is because the oil sector went back into uh, recession. Uh, so it, we saw um, negative growth out of that sector of around 4%. Uh, no, so not necessarily recession, but it did right, show well, I also uh, have negative growth. Yes. Well, interesting. I also have in the studio here with me Tilewa Debajo. He's the CEO of the CFG Advisory. He's my guest host. Um, Tilewa, I'm going to take you up on this um, as well. What do you make of the numbers released so far? Taking a look at the oil sector... And of course, agri, seeing slight contractions there, you know, there are those who actually wondered, I was, you know, watching this um, report, one of the local TV stations, and someone said, you know, why are we recording these numbers in the oil sector, even the fact that we're actually seeing the uptick in oil prices at the moment. But what do you think is really playing out behind the scenes here? What, what are these numbers telling us? Well, the problem in the oil sector is the fact that there's the investments that needs to go in there. I see. And our production capacity. So even if the oil price is at high levels of $70, $60 a barrel, yes. and our production is dropping to about 1.5 million barrels, then we can optimize uh, because we're not reaching our optimal $2 million per day our barrel output. Mm -hmm. So we're losing there. Uh, so those are the issues you need to look at in terms of the investments that are coming out of there. And of course, some of these indicators are leading indicators, some of them are lagging. So the effect might not begin to manifest until the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting you should mention, let me just take you up on what you've just um, said. Talking about production coming down, we haven't heard about bombings in Niger Delta in a while now. So what aspect of production do you think is being affected here? Operational, due to lack of investments. I see. I see. Yvonne, what is your take on that, on what's really playing out in oil and gas space? I mean, I'm asking this because this is a country that is still heavily dependent, you know, on oil to begin with. What do you think is playing out behind this? And he just talked about, of course, lack of investment, of, you know, in the operational sector of Nigeria's oil sector. What do you think can be done here? Okay, I agree with him so about the operation reasons. I, it's one of the reasons why we believe um, production peaks at the 2 million barrels per day uh, number, which we've seen it recover to over the past 18 months. And now uh, we just see downside risks, as we saw in the second quarter, I think partly due to repairs that happened uh, to some of the pipelines as well as leakages. So I think investments is in, uh, truly something that the sector needs in order to uh, pick that number up from the 2 million barrels per day um, region. However, on the non-oil sector part of the economy, our concern is that the bigger sectors are also underperforming. In particular, crop production uh, saw growth slow quite significantly, slow as we've seen this decade actually, um, as well as the trade sector, which saw a slowdown as well as ma uh, manufacturing. So aside from the oil sector, which needs investment to see production pick up beyond 2 million barrels per day, we are seeing underperformance of the bigger non-oil sectors, which is of concern. Yeah, agriculture really is, um, you know, a major concern, according to this report um, as well. I mean, for the first time, I've seen some of this report to highlight the crisis that we're having in most parts um, in Nigeria. But then when it comes to, I think, crop production, that grew by about 1.49%, though. And, you know, I was saying to myself, um, I really wasn't expecting any numbers ticking up within that particular space, as little as it may be. In fact, this report actually says it's the slowest since 1987, when it actually contracted by 4%. Um, percent. So, you know, what do you think can be done to manage this particular situation. Well, I understand crop production is just one part of it to begin yes. with. I mean, it's, it's a whole value chain here. Yeah. It is a value What's chain. What's suffering the most? Um, 
the breadbasket of Nigeria is the Benue Plateau and the northeastern part of Nigeria where you have those crises. Can't you give me so that you fact? can begin mm. to see that the crisis is affecting production in those areas yes. and the manifestation of that, we're now beginning to feel the effects because those areas are no longer productive mm -hmm. because most of those people are in IDP camps and with the problem also spilling over to Benue states and Plateau states uh, down goes the productivity of agriculture. So your food basket is under crisis. Mm. So definitely the output obviously would be uh, challenged. You know, I have a feeling it's getting to that point where we can actually predict what numbers we're going to see next. Because from what you and Yvonne have said, it clearly shows that fundamental issues are still not being tackled. And it seems if A is not solved, I mean, you're going to get the same numbers um, around B. But Yvonne, what is your outlook really going forward? In terms of Nigeria's uh, you know, GDP figures, we have the estimates, of course, of what the IMF projects Nigeria's growth will be, 2.1%. Um, do you really see that happening? Or do you think it's so predictable right now, you know, in terms of Nigeria's GDP figures, if these issues are not handled? Um, I wouldn't say it's predictable. Um, we were more bullish than the IMF previously, but following these second quarter growth numbers, as you probably noted, we've revised down our growth forecast for this year to 2% uh, from 2.9% previously. Uh, one, because we didn't expect the underperformance of the crop or uh, crop production sector to be uh, that uh, sharp. And also, uh, we didn't um, anticipate that the consumer would take this long to come back. And because of the uh, sluggishness we're seeing, particularly uh, with regards to consumption, which is reflected in trades growth, as well as the fact that manufacturing's recovery seems to be uh, faltering, we do think the uh, growth uh, projection, or at least uh, growth will plateau at these levels, at least over the short term. Well, you know, just before I let you go, I mean, I'm not going to let you go without talking about MTN and its woes here in Nigeria. I mean, a few years ago, it was the fine. Um, a part of it was the fact that MTN is going to have to list on Nigeria Stock Exchange. MTN still says they're actually waiting for a certain conditions to be met. So we're keeping our fingers crossed on that. And then here, we now talk about the banks coming on the fire right now, you know, for aiding MTN one way or another. What do you think of this development really and its impact on investment in Nigeria. Is this the right move by the government? I can't speak specifically to the MTN headlines that we're seeing. I'm not close enough to uh, that issue to comment on that. However, if I look at um, the macro environment and particularly doing business environment, um, such headlines, of course, impacts investor sentiment. And uh, Nigeria is at a point in time mm -hmm. where it's trying to bring itself out of a recession. Uh, and, of course, you need investment in order to do that, to accelerate the growth. The growth numbers we are seeing out of uh, Nigeria do not uh, allow for per capita income growth, for instance. For that to happen, GDP growth has to be above 3%. So while Nigeria has made positive gains, at least at the last doing business um, uh, doing business in Nigeria survey, whereby they improved, I think, 24 places, 245 in that survey, which is encouraging. Um, uh, recent uh, headlines, of course, will put a dent in sentiment, of course, uh, going yeah. forward. Uh, however, if the current well, reforms you much. continue um, yeah. for the country, um, that should help try and redress that. Well, thank you very much, um, Yvonne. You are Mangode, Director of Sub-Saharan African Economist at Renaissance Capital.